Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY 2022 earnings conference call of Subex Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note this conference is recorded. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. G. V. K. Krishnakant. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone who have joined the earnings call for the period ended March 31st, 2022. Now I would like to introduce the members of the management who are present for the call. Along with me, I have Mr. Vinod Kumar, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Shankar Rodan, Executive Director, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Suresh Chintara, Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Sumit Agarwal, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Himanshu Singhal, Financial Controller of the company. I would like to start the conference call by going through the safe harbor clause. Certain statements in this call concerning our future growth prospects are certain statements which involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those in such forward-looking statements. The risks and uncertainties relating to these statements include but not limited to fluctuations in earnings, our ability to successfully integrate acquisitions, competition in our area of business, client concentration, liability for damages in our contract, withdrawal of tax incentives, political instability, unauthorized use of our intellectual property and general economic conditions affecting our industry. So with this, I hand over the call to Mr. Vinod Kumar to take it forward. Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I thank you for joining this call. As you, have, as you would have seen from the FY22 published results uh, last evening, the revenue for FY22 stood at 333 crores. The EBITDA for the year um, is 35 crores and the PAT is 21 crores. The cash and the cash equivalent at the end of the year stood at rupees 118.5 crores. Obviously, the financial results have been below our expectation. The delivery issues that we faced on our large deployments around our legacy rock products had a significant negative impact on our revenues and is a primary reason for the revenue dip last year. Having said this, the last quarter was ex exceptionally good from a business acquisition standpoint, and this has resulted in increase of the total contracted backlog up to uh, $170 million from the last quarter levels of $106 million. Now, the financial results for the last year while, not, while definitely not in line with expectation, are uh, a true reflection of the progress that we have made across our portfolio and directionally in general for the last 12 months. Hypersense AI, which is our multi-personal AI ML platform, has made its mark and are seeing excellent traction from customers. Everyone in just about every vertical is adopting AIML, and the category of multi-personal AIML platform is becoming an important one. Let me briefly explain the problem and how we are solving it. In every, every enterprise, particularly who is looking at digital transformation, uh, the CXOs wants to make the enterprise into an AIML-driven enterprise. However, the lack of uh, sufficient data scientists, their inability to di the data scientists to discuss with the business is resulting in a very small portion of the total models that they are developing, getting deployed and generating business results. These multi-personal AIML platforms solve this problem by significantly enhancing the bandwidth of uh, the data scientists and also creating a new category called citizen data scientists who are smart uh, analysts, uh, both from the business side and the technical side to start solving data science problems without being a data scientist by itself. Now, indeed, this is a new segment for telcos, and we are one of the only ones uh, who are focused uh, in, this, in this segment. And I'm meaning about the, the telco segment. Our platform has received multiple accolades, 
recognition from the media and have also been listed as a prominent player in this space by Gartner. I have personally seen the interest in my meetings with CXOs and I believe that we are sitting on a gold mine with Hypersense AI. Now I will request Suresh, uh, our CTO, to provide you a general update on our core portfolio. Thank you, Vinod. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, so as part of our vision to enrich lives through AI-driven trust, Subex has actualized several initiatives that allow organizations to leverage cloud, uh, 5G, big data, and analytics to essentially unify the operations, optimize costs, and enable faster and better decision making using advanced and augmented analytics. Right? As Vinod also mentioned, our award-winning platform, Hypersense, has evolved over the past year uh, as we have now start, started transitioning all our core products, uh, you know, portfolio of products like business assurance, <clears throat> fraud management, network analytics onto the Hypersense platform. Right? Our partner ecosystem management portfolio also is evolving smartly as we look forward to integrating some of the key standards uh, into our product uh, as we uh, into this year. We're also seeing increased traction on the platform given the inherent AML capabilities that are embedded in the Hypersense uh, platform, as we have already mentioned. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. I now request uh, Shankar, our CEO, to provide you an update on ID Central Identity Analytics. Good afternoon, everyone. Subex has a vision of enriching lives by leveraging AI for digital trust. Identity today forms a key aspect of, of that vision of Subex. And in line with that, ID Central is an incubation which has been, uh, uh, which has been created with the vision of solving the problem of onboarding customers. If you look at the journey in the last quarter, we launched the MVP of ID Central in Q1 followed by GTM in Q2. We established the product market fit for ID Central by Q3, wherein we secured about 10 customer contracts. We were able to take that product into production. We were also able to establish clients across different industries such as FinTech, gaming, banking, agri-tech, and many others. In Q4, we, we exceeded our goal of 1 million APIs. We signed our first Elko customer. We also signed our first customer for anti-money laundering. And additionally, we also registered Subex or ID Central as a TSP with Sahamati. All of this is evidence enough to say that we are able to take a product to the market, be able to serve the needs of enterprises, which is uh, emerging more so with the digital transformation that is happening across all industries, and be able to make a mark for ourselves. In the first phase, we have chosen consciously to focus on two markets, Indonesia and India. This is primarily based on the growth that we have seen in these two countries, and we continue to build our relationships and interfaces into government databases and many others which are required as part of this onboarding validation. From a customer standpoint, the other strategy that we have started to look at is the possibility of trying to not only acquire more customers, but also go after segments or customers with a much higher MRR. The pricing mechanism for ID Central is also based on a per API model, which is largely in line with the typical SaaS kind of an industry. And, and we do believe that we are on track to be able to now take ID Central to the market and showcase uh, the required velocity in terms of customer acquisition and API growth. Thank you. Thank you, Shankar. I also wanted to update you that uh, in line with what we had um, um, said earlier, we have started providing details of ID Central and Sectrio in our investor deck. Uh, now let me cover the progress that we have made on Sectrio, our security portfolio. During the last year, we pivoted to address OT security, which is a 10 billion market, um, uh, which is expected to grow up to 10 billion market 
2025, and the current CAGR is about 25%. Now, this was done as we saw delays in IoT deployment due to COVID and supply chain constraints. This also meant that uh, it was necessary for us to have a new identity for this product portfolio, and we launched the Sectrio brand successfully. During the last quarter call, I had indicated about a significant wins, about significant wins, both in private and the public sector in India. We have provided those details in our investor presentation. We are completing the implementation at State Bank of India, and we hope to make it as a reference for the banking segments, and, uh, uh, and, and this will be a, uh, a, a, a very important segment that we are looking to cater with our security portfolio. Our current focus for OTIOT security is in the markets of India, Middle East, particularly Saudi, and North America, specifically Mexico. In these markets, primarily, uh, we are in the evaluation phase when, it, when we talk about a deployment, and post this evaluation for phase from the customers, we expect the market to move to a continuous threat monitoring and, uh, and, and detection and remediation phase in the coming months. So at this point in time, we are doing a lot of vulnerability assessment and visibility of the asset, those kind of exercises. And once those exercises are completed, we will get into the phase of deployment of products and, con and continuous monitoring. Now, let me also provide you an update on the delivery issues that I had alluded to earlier in the, earlier in the briefing. Now, this issue pertains to our old rock platform where some of the contracts that we had, we had challenges with delivering the contracts uh, due to multiple issues. Some issues from a platform standpoint, some issues from a customer standpoint, uh, and and um, and all these things resulted in uh, in, a, in, a, in a negative revenue impact. As we stand today, we have uh, we still have a few uh, rock-based projects to be implemented, and we expect that implementation to ha to complete uh, by the second quarter of this year. Uh, post which, most of the deployments, if not all, will be uh, on our new Hypersense Place platform. Now, with respect to the guidance. We are not specifically providing any guidance going forward. However, let me also clearly uh, tell you the transformations that we are uh, going as a, uh, what we're undergoing as a company. The first is from a license model, we are transforming into a subscription, subscription model. And most of the contracts that we have secured in quarter four are of this nature. Uh, for sure, uh, when compared with the earlier license model, which was a very established model in the telco vertical where most of our business uh, or core business comes from, um, uh, having a subscription-based model is something new. Therefore, the contracting is taking significantly more time than otherwise will happen for a uh, license contract. However, um, directionally, I think it is the right thing for us to do. and. Uh, we believe that uh, this will have the uh, right impact both for customers and for us, and also it is significantly increasing um, the, the competitive advantage uh, that we have. I also want to um, uh, provide, preempt uh, some questions on the ESOPs based on some of the uh, you know, investor clarifications that we have received. Now, the ESOPs have been provided to the current management in the financial year F5-19 and F5-20. And these were provided at a strike rate which was more than the prevailing market, market rate at that point in time. Now, as with any ESOP scheme, the success of the ESOP schemes uh, happens based on the uh, increase in the market capitalization of the company. And in that sense, this ESOPs having ESOP scheme has been reasonably successful because our market cap from the 2019-2020 times FI20 time frame uh, is significantly higher. However, uh, as per this ESOP scheme, the vesting uh, and therefore the exercising happens in a, in a uh, delayed nature. And some of the uh, you know, listings that we have done to the stock exchanges with respect to ESOP exercise 
is the exercise of the ESOPs pertaining to the financial year 19 and the financial year 20. Now, in the history of SUBEX, I cannot recall a time when we had a portfolio that we can engage with a customer on an enterprise level. With Hypersense AI, we have that now. And with all the enhancements that we are talking about in our core portfolio, in Sectrio and ID Central, we are also generating interest from various uh, other stakeholders of our society like governments, public sector undertaking, research institutions. This also made it pertinent to reframe our vision towards from our uh, old vision of being the leaders in uh, digital trust. Our new vision is to enrich lives with AI-led digital trust. Enriching lives with AI-led digital trust. We have made several changes to our leadership and now have a team that is balanced to drive both our core and new areas. While the transition from a license to a subscription model for our core products will come with short-term financial impacts, we are confident that directionally it is the right thing to do. All of our, as I mentioned, all of our deal, new deals are of subscription type. We also have a significant competitive advantage and the increase in the contracted backlog in Q4 is a validation to that effect. Looking ahead, we are entering the new year with good momentum, with a fantastic order book in Q4 and with a great portfolio. During the course of this year, along with migrating our existing customers of fraud and our revenue assurance onto our new Hypersense page platform, we intend to increase our market share for our new solutions, that is Hypersense AI, Sectrio, and ID Center. I fully understand that the last year results are not, line, not in line with the expectation. However, I would like to again reiterate that the, what the financials do not convey is the tremendous progress that we have made, including the possibility of creating a category in telcos around multi-personal AI and ML platform and own it as Subex. This is our future and we will make it work for all stakeholders. Your continued support means a lot to us and I also thank you for the same. Thank you very much and now we will open for questions. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who has a question may please press star and one on the telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star and one again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. So our first question from Mr. Deepak Chokhani from Raid Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Vinod. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I come on this call every quarter and I ask this same question. Great assurance, great words, but nothing reflects in the number. When will we see that? Okay. Uh, look, Deepak, I, I understand where you're coming. Uh, we have um, uh, done two things. We have provided a lot more information with respect to the details uh, and the progress that we are making, the investor deck that we have provided. Uh, that gives you sort of qualitative uh, information about what is happening. Uh, I've also detailed some of the key reasons why we had a, particularly a dip in last year. Uh, I would say the delivery issues, which we sort of we are towards the end of it, because as I said, uh, most of the rock projects are getting to the end of uh, the delivery, and uh, all the new projects on, on our on our new platforms, which is significantly easier and faster to deliver. The second aspect is with respect to uh, the migration, the, the the model change from a sub license to a subscription. Now, some of these things uh, we could not factor it uh, aptly, and looking looking back, we could have been. More, more careful in factoring some of these things. But now with the, with the benefit of the hindsight, we can say that uh, these will have some impact for a, in, a, in, a, in a short-term basis. 
But I would say that uh, if you look at the contracted backlog, um, that should give you some confidence as to uh, the fact that we are securing new logos and uh, the ticket size, even though small, uh, you know, the ticket size, uh, sorry, the new logos that we are securing in a much larger market, uh, we should be able to grow and meet the expectation. So I, as I said, I'm not going to provide any specific guidance, uh, but we will continue to provide qualitative information uh, that will help you to uh, uh, make, a, make a judgment as to perform. I also feel that, uh, that uh, we will start providing more specific revenue-based, financial-based information around, the new, around our new portfolio going forward. But as I said, we were just waiting for the right time so that it will, it will convey the right story, uh, Deepak. This, this is all good, uh, Mr. Vinod. Uh, you know, the, the problem is we are not able to judge because every time we attend a call, it's, it's all good talks. Uh, it's, it's all good presentation. Uh, it's all good uh, kind of uh, uh, assurances. There's no research report. Uh, there, there's, there's always good talks about, uh, on, in the calls. So we as retail investors just are not able to judge. So I think it's high time the management, even if it is, you're not going to achieve targets, even if it's not growing. We need to know. We need to know from the management where we are heading. Right? I mean, it's been like eight quarters. I don't know. I mean, it's like we keep hearing the same thing again and again. I'm not pointing any faults, but but let's let the truth come out. We need we need to know where we are heading. Uh, just we can't judge because just basis this call. Yeah. So so look, I think the reason why we are uh, first of all we don't want to give any guidance, but even just uh, uh, this whole aspect of uh, uh, subscrip license to subscription conversion uh, is uh, the first time we are doing at this scale because as I told you, almost 90% of the contracts that were secured in Q4, which was a very large uh, you know order booking con order booking quarter for us, has been in the. Uh, in the subscription where uh, earlier it used to uh, we used to secure the revenue in a period of about 12, 12 to 18 months that is coming mm -hmm. over a period of five years. So uh, we will see a, uh, you know, a revenue going up and, uh, and gradually, uh, but as I said, you would have to give me a one or two quarters more so that we can completely profile this and and uh, and pro and provide you some more information on at least on the annuity based growth or the or the, or the uh, you know the the monthly subscription based growth uh, that we can that we can kind of at least show that to you at this point in time it's too early for us also to figure out how the whole thing will work out but uh, we are acquiring customers we are converting the customers and directionally as i said uh, the uh, the whole effort is to make this, uh, as Subex known in the new category, which is a large opportunity. Um, so, so uh, that's where we are, Deepak. I mean, um, so, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question from Mr. Pratap Maliwal from Mount Infra Finance. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, and thanks for taking my questions. I've got a few questions. Uh, when it comes to sector, so we've called out SBI as a potentially referentiable client. Now, as I understand, Sectrio is an offering that we give to clients on multiple sites. So how should we look at it? Maybe how many branches of SBI are we deploying Sectrio in? Or if it, we can get some color on this, like we've got some clients in manufacturing and banking. So is it, uh, is it more of a standard offering or is, are we giving different use cases across industries? And when it comes to SBI, how many branches have we signed? How do we see the scalability? That's my first question. Okay, so uh, just uh, obviously I do not want to get to the specifics of the of the of the de of the deal because it is uh, security in a, of, uh, in nature. Having said that, at this to give you a scale, at this point in time we are covering about 5,000 devices and uh, exp and uh, and the total uh, footprint that we intend to cover going forward is about 300. Thousand. Now, is this a standard offering? It is. It is a module of our sectrio, which is around the decep um, around the deception. Uh, so, it's a standard offering that we. It is repeatable in nature. So, we ex we expect. Uh, uh, I mean, the, we, we are we are nearing the completion, and once this is completed, uh, we expect to make it referenceable, and that will be a, a big feather in, feather in our cap. 
Uh, there are other verticals that we have secured such market customers. You can see that in the list in the investor presentations. And there again, we are the initial phase of deployments in one plant, in one factory, and things like that. And our expectation is that once this is completed, we will scale that to other, uh, other sites and, and uh, factories of those entities. Okay, thank you. Uh, now it comes to IT Central. Uh, are we giving out maybe as it is it are we giving out the ARR and the MRR number for the IDC and Secretary right now or is that possible to provide because I believe last time we heard the number like 100 to 150k so can we get an update on that please? Uh, look, I think I think we are still uh, uh, in the in the range of about 100k around 100k at this I mean in by this quarter we'll get into the range of 100k we will provide you the details because to a, let's let's provide it one by one at this point in time we have provided the growth that we are seeing in the API pool uh, we were comfortable in providing that and as we go along we will provide you the details of both MRR and ARR uh, for that okay sure thank you sir and just one last question maybe if I can just squeeze in when it comes to the revenue composition we see that EMEA has uh, fallen by eight percent and APAC has risen by eight percent so what could be the reason behind it? And is this something that's expected to reverse, or should we look at this as a trend going ahead? So um, I, I think it is just a, the question of uh, the, when, the, when the revenue was revenue was booked, and it could be movement of, as I told you, because of delays, some revenues get moved from one quarter to other. From a trend perspective, there is uh, nothing specific. We are extremely strong in the EMEA and APAC region. Uh, in the in the EMEA region, we are exceptionally strong. We are seeing a lot of business coming from the Middle East region, in particular, uh, followed by uh, by uh, by Europe and Africa. In APAC, uh, we have uh, again again uh, the the things have been stable. Obviously, one more thing. I'll let me take the take the opportunity to update that with travels opening up. Uh, we are having much more, um, uh, you know, uh, fruitful and uh, and uh, better conversations with our customer, particularly for our new range of products. Obviously, for our core range, it is a requirement. We will come to know about it because we are a prominent player there. But for our some of the new products like, um, uh, you know, like the Hypersense AI, etc., there's a lot of uh, market, uh, you know, uh, education that we have to do and say pitching to the right level. Those things are very difficult. Uh, in the, when we were not traveling, but with that opening up, uh, you know, we have been a much better control, and we are make a, we're able to generate a much much bigger impact. So, so directionally, there is not much of change. It might be just a movement of some revenues from one quarter to another. Okay, so thank you. I've got a few other questions. We'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our next question from Mr. Abhishek Kale, individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Am I audible, Vinod? Yes, I appreciate Yeah, Vinod, uh, question regarding the secretary or deployment with SBI. Uh, can you provide the details uh, around the revenue and the margins that we are expecting from this contract, or is it more at the POC level that we are in? Okay, uh, uh, appreciate. I am unable to provide any specific details because of the security deployment, etc. However, I can tell you this is a commercial engagement going into production. It is not POC or anything like that. We have an agreement, as I told, to cover 500 devices, and we also have, as a part of the agreement, extensible uh, the option to extend that to 300,000 devices. Okay, and uh, Vinod, uh, one probably concern or take it, I mean, whichever ways you would like to, but in the investor's deck, I mean, you, uh, we are talking more about the awards or we have more to talk about the awards that our products have won, but not uh, more about uh, actually the contract wins. I mean, and you have called it out uh, yourself, but I would like to reiterate that for an investor like me and, and, and a retail investor like me, it doesn't matter how many awards the, the product wins, so long as it doesn't translate into an order book or an increase in the order book, a top line and a bottom line growth. It means nothing to me, right? I mean, yeah, we have received accolades from Gardner. Our product is referred here and there. Point taken, well said. But these are not translating into the, and the bottom line growth. And at least for the last three quarters, this has been the story, and I've been. I'm, I'm a very patient investor, but now, uh, I mean, this has started to bother me as well. 
so i would like the management uh, to comment on this as to uh, what's the way forward from here so so abhishek i think uh, again uh, th- thanks for that uh, question uh, so let me let me stop that i mean it's a new area and in the new area um, as i told you particularly in the telco segment uh, this particular segment that the, the multi person ai ml platform is a new category and uh, if you look at the go to the new category there's a lot of um, you know um, uh, market uh, teaching that we have to provide to say that uh, this this is the value and this is uh, this is how it can solve the problem and towards that this awards and gartner mentions etc is significant in fact i can tell you that the gartner mention has been one of the key significant achievement last year because it's so so huge that it gives us a, a immediate kind of validation and and a, 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 a sort of it's not referenceability but at least a, a credibility is established for us to engage with that so it's huge so if you look at secreo which is the security if you look at we had we had provided similar validation now uh, we are not providing any more the validation in the watch that we are winning in the secreo side we are provided providing you providing you the list of customers which we are winning which are big logos very very critical logos and critical segments in each of the markets so it's a it's a kind of you know journey that we have to go through at this point in time hypersense ai uh, i can also tell you that we have secured the first customer each in africa and in the in the australian region and uh, uh, we have just secured it and uh, this is very very important because i i have I been mean, probably just to retrade what again with this product the first time we have a product that can engage into every part of an organization that is cfo cmo cio uh, ceo cto everyone we never had that capability and we are starting with telco and uh, but this is a multi this this problem and this uh, this uh, need is there across all other verticals you know one last question if i may please uh, probably an ask more uh, of a uh, nature uh, is if while we announced the deal and order wins right it would be helpful if we publish uh, uh, the deal size or contractual numbers unless and until we are bound by some uh, secrecy cases like with sbi where we are not able to for some security reasons disclose the revenue uh, that we expect from this product or the order size would it be possible to include these in our future uh, uh, communications that we send to the exchanges uh, and as well as abhishek include- abhishek our our contract specifically call out that that cannot be done so i guess uh we are okay. very, i mean in some cases we cannot even provide the details in security in particular we will not be comfortable in providing any details considering the fact that it is in the security space but even other customers getting the deal size etc will be i mean we cannot get the get the get the uh, overall sense for a very multi multi million dollar those kind of things we can broadly can be communicated which we are doing it at this point in time but otherwise okay. it's very specific so it's quite difficult at the shape okay thank you vinod appreciate that and uh and get back in the queue if i have questions thank you vishay thank you very much thank you sir our next question from mr akhil arora individual investor please go ahead sir yes hi uh, hi sir good afternoon uh, uh i mean again uh, i mean i know uh, things haven't gone as per the plan and and you have been uh, explaining to us uh, what we have been doing qualitatively and and i do see like there has been progress uh, there there are just a couple of questions that i just want to understand why we fell short of uh, the plan here so uh, uh, and and pardon my ignorance uh, in terms of the implementation of the solution so if my understanding is correct our customers are using our existing core uh, revenue assurance and and fraud management solutions it's just that we haven't been able to move them to hypersense or convince them to move to hypersense on a timely basis is that what is leading us uh, uh, in in not meeting our revenue targets uh so so i killed uh, two things okay one is that our we had an earlier platform called a rock platform where we had uh, most of our current deployments and the revenue is from uh, that that deployment of that product and some of those projects we had difficulty for multiple multiple difficulties one was that we had some issues some challenges with our platform which we got resolved only by 
the, the latter part of last quarter. Uh, and then we had some challenges from the customer end with uh, delays on account of providing us hardware because of supply chain issues. So several issues meant that uh, the project that we secured is taking much more time than what it is otherwise taking, uh, otherwise should have taken for deployment. So this is point number one. The second point is that all the new deals that we are, that we are getting for Hypersense, now that's our, our preference and or, or our preference or our, our insistence is that it has to be of a subscription nature. So that means there's no license implementation, which is you give a license implement and recognize the revenue, but this is on a subscription basis. So means that that is get converted into a, into a four year, five year term of uh, a term, similar to what the Microsoft has done for their OS 365 or the Adobe has done. And if you look at some of the challenges, if you look at the revenue profile of these companies who have gone through the transition, uh, when you make the transition from a license to a subscription, there would be a dip in the revenue because whatever you are taking over 12 months or 18 months come over much longer duration. So we are going through that phase in all our new contracts. Uh, so these are the two things that I called out, Akhil. Okay, okay, perfect. Well, that, that's helpful. And, and the second thing that I want to understand, like, uh, I think, uh, these contracts that we are winning recently, both on the newer areas of Secchio and uh, ID, ID Central, obviously is focused on India and Indonesia, but on Secchio and, and some of the other products are more EMEA and APEC based. Uh, whereas the tie ups that we have done in the past with Snowflake uh, uh, or Tech Mahindra, or even for that matter with Telefonica, were on Europe and US. So, what's the reason that we haven't been able to crack? Or, or, or being able to convince logos in in US and Europe. Okay, see, um, uh, in in this space, right? I mean, in the in the sector in the sector space, if you look at the go-to market, there are there are three four types of channels that we are using. Uh, one is the direct to direct to customers through partners. So there are distributors. We are so we have appointed uh, key distributors in. Um, uh, in the markets that we are focused on, which is India, Middle East, and uh, North America. And uh, through the distributors, we directly uh, approach, uh, approach the customers. So for example, the, the many of the manufacturing customers that we have listed, like Mabe, Godridge, et cetera, we, have, uh, we reach them through the distributors and local partners. So this is one route. The second is through large OEMs, uh, which are global in nature. Uh, because uh, when we talk about operational technology, they are the OEMs providing those technology, and there is uh, a lot of influence they have on the choice or the suggestion of the security that will work with their platform. So it's important for us to work with some of these partners, uh, uh, the OEM partners. The third is the large SIs. So if you look at some of the SIs that we are talking about, like Mahindra, uh, you know, Telefonica, etc., these are large MSSPs which which um, have bundled our product offerings and taking into uh, the market as a part of their offering. Now, what most of these partnerships initially focused on was IoT security because that is where we enabled them and uh, we, uh, we created the product offerings. And now there's a delay in this adoption of those things because the IoT deployment projects itself are, are, are delayed and uh, most of them are happening. Uh, maybe the expectation that we start this year or towards next year because of COVID and supply chain issues and uh, their inability to get on the ground and deploy it. This is not our product. I'm talking about the core IoT deployment. That is getting delayed. So therefore, some of these projects, while we have enabled them, we have had initial things, we have to scale back many of these efforts because of the lack of traction in the market. That's where we have pivoted ourselves to cover OT security. OT is very, very hot and active with a number of cyber attacks on, on companies and factories. It is very, very hot. And uh, so therefore, uh, now we, have, we, we, we completed the, the product offering is there. We are there. I think we are working very, very closely with some of the OEMs that are very focused, OEMs and SIs that are very focused on this market. So it's not that we have enabled and that will not be there, but because of the market realities, we have we are focusing more on OT, and that's a separate set of uh, uh, partners and uh, and SIs that we are currently enabling. Okay, okay, no, perfect. That's helpful. I, I just have one last question, if you may allow. So uh, that that's on ID Central. Uh, I mean, I heard you saying that still our revenue run rate is around 100k, whereas uh, the numbers in terms of the KPIs that we are tracking, which is API pool, that has increased significantly, and 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 that's encouraging for us to see as well like uh, is there a trial period initially for some of these customers 
and and once uh, they get comfortable, did you start charging them? Um, ID Central. This is Shankar here. ID Central is a self-serve platform where customers come in and sign up. Uh, we we tend to then talk to customers to understand the business case and uh, propose a solution. Uh, there is uh, no free uh, credits or anything like that. Uh, customers come in, uh, buy and buy a certain number of APIs and and then start consuming the service. Okay, uh, that, that's helpful, Shankar. Uh, and and just uh, so if, if we see that, then I think from quarter three to quarter four, uh, the APIs have almost tripled, like from 1.5 million to 4 million. Uh, why, why is it that like it's still not reflecting in our in our run rate? And 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 as an extension to that, if you can also give us some guidance based on your discussions on the number of customers or the run rate that you see and and any indication of the API pools. Uh, look, I think I think overall the customer acquisition we are sort of almost doubling per quarter uh, at this at this point in time. But we are looking at also qualitatively improving the in, uh, the qualitative improving the type of customer so that we can get higher MRR. Uh, it's a very competitive market, and at this point in time we are replacing the existing providers based on uh, both on, um, on on terms of the higher accuracy that we can provide and also the appropriate uh, commercial engagement. Uh, now that said, uh, we have had seen an increase in the in the in the MRR uh, with the addition of it. Uh, there is also a delay in onboarding these customers because after Shankar mentioned they come and to buy an API, there has been particularly with some of the larger customers, uh, the, you know, there's a time taking. Um, that that's something which we are trying to resolve. It's a market reality that it's taking more than time, more time than normally a SaaS uh, to get into a production kind of thing, a full production, or in, particularly from the larger set of customers. So we are going through this space. So it's not that the MRR is not increasing in line with our uh, expectation. Uh, uh, look, I think, I think the, the, as I told you, the next milestone is for us to get to an ARR level of $1 million. And as soon as we get that details, we will come back to you and we uh, uh, we, we hope that in the in the in the in the in the, at least uh, during the course of this uh, this year we will get very very close to that number if not cross that. I'm okay. talking about ARR, not MRR. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I, I mean, I was just curious because we we had that target uh, to achieve by this. Yeah. So just thought I'll I'll just uh, ask. It. But anyway, thank you, thank you, so and best of luck uh, for the next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next question from Mr. Lalit Somar from Contemi Trading Solutions. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hello, Vinoda. Hi, so, I mean, uh, as you stated, we are, uh, I mean, we are in transition phase from subscription-based model to, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, from license-based to subscription-based model. So, I would just uh, like to know, I mean, uh, how much time it will take, and plus. Uh, I mean, what percentage of customers uh, are migrated, and uh, uh, how much time it will going to take? And uh, okay, there are two aspects to it. One is our existing customers, and uh, we are migrating from the current model to a subscription model. There are two things. We are I mean, many customers are ready, but of course they will have to. Um, uh, you know, secure the budget, etc., because uh, this will come with some cost uh, cost uh, from there. And even if, let us say, we are making it very, very compelling, so there is a budget. We allow to go through the budget cycle, but most of the customers are very, very interested because you know it's a much better model. The second part is that all the new uh, new deals that we are winning for new customers, both both the uh, replacement of existing vendor or brand new customers, all of them are on subscription model. We are only only offering subscription model for the uh, for the products like fraud and revenue assurance for high and things like that. So uh, pretty much everything that we are signing up except for maybe uh, some things which we are not ready or the platform is not ready as yet on our high business platform, everything else we are securing on a subscription model at this point in time. Okay. Uh, I also have a concern, uh, I mean, uh, related to dividend, though, I mean, uh, I was not expecting uh, it last year, but just uh, would like to know why we did not took a call on dividend this year, plus, uh, I mean, uh, how much cash is lying in our books and what uh, call we are going to take on it going ahead. 
So, so this time, because of the uh, of the way um, the, the 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 standalone entity, we did not have the sufficient accumulated results to consider that. Uh, so uh, you know that uh, you might be aware that we have done a restructuring we completed during the end of last quarter, whereby we moved all the assets from Subex Assurance LLP, which is bulk of our core offering, into the uh, into the standalone entity. Uh, so that issue uh, has gotten resolved, and uh, I guess that going forward, based on uh, how the board, uh, based on board's uh, consideration, uh, uh, we will we will do. Uh, um, you know uh, what, what is the right thing, and obviously, I guess that the emphasis is uh, to have the growth bal balanced with other aspects. But as I said, uh, this was not considered this time because of the reserves not being adequate. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, how much cash is lying uh, in our books, uh, and uh, what call we are going to take it uh, in future? I mean, is there, will there be any buyback, or we are going for any acquisition in near term, or uh, I mean, it will take more time. Uh, look, as of, as I told at this point in time, our closing cash and cash equivalents were about 118.5 crores. Uh, that was where our cash and cash equivalents. Uh, at this point in time, um, you know, this the, the emphasis is uh, that uh, we have, we I mean we have identified these areas of high percent AI sector, etc. These are large markets, multi vertical markets. At this point in time, we are focused on a small market because we want to make an impact rather than spreading through things. Uh, we'll, de we'll definitely need a lot of capital to, to scale it to the level that we want. Uh, that would be our priority, but as I mentioned, the board, board in its wisdom will consider what is the right thing to do uh, once we get there. Okay, um, thanks for the information. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for you in for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next question from Mr. Mahesh Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, Vinod Kumar. My question is, what is the order book as on today? And how much of that order book can be built in the next year, financial year 2022-2023? Uh, we have provided that information in, uh, in the investor deck. The total contracted book is about 118.5 million. Out of that, about 30, 30, 36 million is what is of that. That 36 million is what is uh, uh, revenue coming for this financial. Okay. See, my next next question is, Mr. Anil Singhvi, he was the chairman of the board. He has sold all his shares. Now, what is his skin in the business? And he is not attending any investor call. So what is his value addition to the board and to the company? Uh, uh, look, Mr. Singhvi has been on the board for several years and has been very instrumental in turnaround from a completely debt-ridden company to where we are today. So he has been providing the direction on some of the new things that we are doing and very, very actively uh, uh, involved in guiding, guiding me and the management on taking the company forward. With respect to the investments, etc., that is his personal thing, and that's not something which I would like to comment in this call. See, he is coming on the television for a three degree as human, but he has never come for Subex. What is the reason for that? So he, I think he is a pendant director, and there he is an ex executive executive director. That is main main reason, but. Uh, uh, that's what I can. Uh, that, that that's 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 what I can. And I think, the, I mean, I, I just want to confirm that he's very very uh, actively involved in uh, on an ongoing basis on how to help me and uh, and the management in taking our strategy forward. We expect him to be present in the investor call, even though he's independent. So his independent view will be more useful to us to anal analyze the future. Okay, I, I'll, I'll take that feedback. But again, I think I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take that feedback and uh, uh, we'll see. See, I have one suggestion. You need to take somebody on the board who has a global experience in SaaS business, so that he can guide you where are the pitfalls, like whatever problems you have been facing for last one year. Such person would have, in advance, told you that these are the problems we need to address upfront. So okay. You should get somebody so, global sure. experience so, person. I think so. This is precisely the right reason why we augmented the board, board with uh, uh, 
George, George Secretary. George comes with uh, tremendous SaaS, ex SaaS experience and been associated both as a director uh, and, and a mentor to many of the SaaS successes in India. That's the reason. And we are, we are taking a lot of his help in driving that. So a SaaS business takes time for us to set up, and that's why I think if you look at we are very, very focused in a small market, small, large market to create an impact. So if you look at the way we are running SaaS, it is very, very different than what we are doing core, and this is some of the guidance that we are getting from uh, uh, and guidance and mentorship that we are getting from George as a director. We also have Nisha on our board. Nisha is also very well connected with this thing. So we are, at this point, that we have sufficient cover for both our four core and new areas. Yeah, I'm not seeing any global person on the board. All are local Indians. Okay. There are some right. global person. I, yeah. I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Thank you, sir. Our next question from Mr. Vivek Kumar, individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Vinod, uh, for this presentation. And uh, I have been an investor with Subex since 2015, since the era of Surjit Singh and when the company was debt ridden, as you mentioned, and the company has turned around. So uh, two things, I, I, I am invested in Subex for lifetime. That's I, when I invested, I took that call. So I have only two questions. I understand the, when we are transiting from one kind of business to another, there will be a time lag. Like I remember in 2015, also Surjit Singh had told that we would become $100 million revenue company in two years. We haven't become uh, so far yet. So my first question, what is the vision I know you are not giving guidance, though you had given last year that we will be having a double-digit growth, and though we are having reducing the regional growth. So what is the vision for 10 years? In 10 years, where do we see Subex? Uh, look, I think, I think uh, the vision is, as I mentioned, to enrich lives with AI like digital trust. What does that mean yeah, in a near-term basis by FI24, that is in next 24 months, we want to ensure that we enable about 100,000 business users um, uh, with AI. And uh, the second thing is that if we have to also have to do that, we, are, we should make Subex as a place where we are able to attract exceptional minds coming together to create great results while having, having fun. So that's okay. where we want to have that. This would also ensure that uh, from a stakeholder standpoint or investor stakeholder standpoint, if we can get to that, we will establish as a key player uh, in the space of uh, uh, multi-person AI ML platform, which is, I think, it is our future. And, and okay. we have an opportunity as a Subex to own it, and particularly in the telco space. So that's our focus at this point in time. I know that this is, I mean, this was this, uh, some of the numbers is a, uh, it's hard to chew for us as well, but I think that's not deterring us from the single, st I mean, single uh, focus of getting it, execu getting the execution right in this area. Now, once we get that, get that, I just again want to don't want to hazard the guess and give you a number, but we will be a significantly larger company uh, once we get to that get to that phase. So the, our near term is whether we can we are able to enable 100,000 business users with. Uh, uh, with our high-percent AI. Oh, that's great. See, anyway, I was not expecting, I, as I said, see, uh, when I invested, I knew that this company has potential that that I can see in my old age also to become a global leader. So, as, and I agreed with the, our previous uh, investor that perhaps there is some lack of a vision. Like, as you said, that you were not giving guidance. But though I saw that potential that you are going to give a vision when you spoke to us last year, and you were so confident that we will definitely have a double-digit growth, I could see that there is a not so – I don't uh, do, uh, so much focus on the number, per se, but the vision of the company or the business, per se. But though number also, they, they have they, – at some point of time, that has to be reflected and translated into the number also. That's something I, when I see missing, I feel a little bit of dent in my self-confidence that whether I can, be, I can live my investment in Subex for my future generation. 
so that thing i i feel somehow now that somebody who has a long term vision like i i, I can give you one example of infobin a very small company like yours for same market cap and almost same revenue uh, though they have a better ebita i also don't understand why ebita has gotten dent on your uh, revenue side uh, oh. when when you had a, a long a very a large amount of interest outgo i could understand that your ebita was negative now there is no interest outgo but your ebita is still coming down 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 and your employee benefit is increasing uh, multifold so when yeah. we are giving the benefit to the, yeah yeah please yeah vivek i think i think uh, at that point in time you are right we had the interest thing but we only had three product portfolio we had fraud ra and partner management today these are our core obviously these are i wouldn't call it as not important it's important we are uh, progressing it but today we have portfolio that that uh, i mean when we talk about enriching lives with ai like digital trust what do we mean by that that it's it's a uh, it is in which working on a very large space and making a significant impact in the market now uh, we are very excited by that vision obviously like you said uh, somehow at some point in time the number should reflect the progress not the portfolio alone and uh, i i sincerely hope that that will happen and uh, it will happen soon uh, but but i think the fact that uh, we are now three core new portfolio added would mean that we have more resources driving those things because that's a future right i mean as you hopefully agree that that's a future yes. uh, uh, so we have we are investing on the future so that's why uh, you know the, the cost of not uh the cost i mean our view is that we will continue to invest even though as i said this it has been a big time for us uh we'll choose this and we will we'll get on with it and uh, probably in the in the coming quarters uh, slowly we will we will build this up oh thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir next question from mr arun tirumalai into which will investor please go ahead sir hi uh Uh, i represent a company called earthwise investors so just wanted to check uh, you know we uh, know uh, in terms of the abid uh, the previous question also so you have a steady state kind of an employee you know expenditure on a quarterly basis of about 50 55 crores right so just wanted to understand that uh, uh, you know since you're going to be saas based in terms of the revenue model so is there a platform effect to these businesses so because i am assuming that the entire 117 million of order book going forward uh, is completely on a, you know on a saas based kind of a revenue model so would that entail an operating leverage to your uh, you know business so because uh, i just see that if the if your for example if as your revenue uptake happens uh, your cost should not increase proportionately right so will that happen going forward uh, Uh, and also because you more or less guiding for a flattish growth right because you're saying that executable order book for the next year is only going to be say about uh, 36 to 40 million so even if you, it translates about uh, 10 million a quarter so would that uh, the cost is about 5 you know as of now say about 55 crores will that remain or where do you see your employee cost going up and will there be some kind of a uh, operating leverage inherent in this business because i'm sure the development cost would already be you know undertaken for most of these projects yeah. okay so uh, see at the, um, the the cost would remain more or less at this level uh, uh, at the at the revenue at the current revenue levels as the revenue goes up as you rightly said there will not be a proportionate increase but there will be some increase as we have to increase the delivery capacity and things like that so uh, for the uh, for, so so the ebitda levels on a steady state basis will come up because this year the ebitda is is much lower because we had a revenue dip but as that gets resolved we will get back to the ebitda that we normally are setting the expectation of uh, you know 15 to 20% but i just want to also caveat that being say, uh, caveat with that uh, if we find a huge opportunity to scale any of our new businesses we will not hold back and we will let's say we will definitely uh make that investment to scale that because uh you know we it's early days for us for some of the new areas and uh if if you think that uh, i mean we are just moderated uh the 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 investments in line with what we are expecting the market to to absorb but if we see an uh, you know a, a fast traction there our uh, our ebitda might i mean our investments will go up uh, but by and large no, so you are right in the sense that we will we'll be at that current levels of spend 
So just to rephrase that, so what I am saying, so for example, the 117 million of order book you have, so that would it cost in terms of say as of uh, this month, which is roughly the same revenue, you know, on an annualized basis of what we've done last year or something, right? Approximately, I'm not asking you for uh, this one. So would be or uh, the cost, the employee cost, which is the main component of the thing, right? So would it remain in that 200, 250 crore? Uh, so for example, if uh, say following year, if your order wins with increase at 23, 24 in the future, as you're uh, expecting these products to catch up. So if we hit a, say a revenue run rate of say 500 crores per annum. uh then would you see that entire thing translating into ebitda agreed i agree that you would want to invest a little bit more on future but at least on the current core which is id central uh, and the three products right the security product the other one so that should start the scaling and give you that operating uh, leverage right at least on those particular products yeah uh, look i think i think uh, 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 the the expectation that probably we want to set is that we will still operate around 20% EBITDA. That's what we are looking at on a steady state basis. Obviously, as we okay. really scale this house business, it will go up. But at least for the next two three years, that's what we are expecting. Our our view is that we will be around that that range of EBITDA. And also, just one last question in terms of the execution of your order book. Right, uh, for example, uh, you currently you've said that about 36 million will happen in 12 months. Is there any upside to that, or is there only these existing orders that are going to be, you know, executed? Will something new come through the year, or you expect something like that to happen through the current year? Or obvious, obviously, there will be some some new new contracts that we will book and recognize during the course of this year. So that will definitely happen on top of it. No, but in terms of contract actual revenue, what is the kind of uh, time frame which you generally foresee on an average across order? Uh, look, I think that has changed significantly, right? As I said, typically, otherwise I would say that within the 12 to 12 to maximum 18 months, the entire contract will get executed. However, uh, now that is getting extended to the to the to the contract duration, which would be either three years or or in many cases five years. So that's the way I would put it that that it is currently getting executed over a period of five years. Okay, okay. So Vinny, you're saying the 117 will keep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. so much. So our next question from Mr. Aditya Sharma, ICICI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, Vinod. Uh, I just sort of wanted to understand, uh, you know, over the last five years that I've been tracking this company, you know, we keep talking about turnaround, you know, empowering, additionally adding, attracting talent and all. You know, the way I see it is basically I had a 60 crore interest outflow, which we all uh, sort of uh, diluted our equity, you know, stopped that interest outflow, and then somehow we just managed to. you know just take care of that 60 crores by increasing my employee cost i just sort of wanted to understand you know is there an actual uh, and you know a lot of previous uh, you know questions were also revolving around this do we actually have a vision because i see this company for the last old almost a decade or so just hovering around that uh, you know 300 350 odd crores of uh, top line number is there an actual plan that we you know sort of intend to um, you know scale it up really okay. like actually scale it up or just sort of keep uh, you know clowning around these numbers and uh, making stories thanks yeah so first of all i don't know the interest that you're talking about uh, that you talk about 5 years back that might be that might be there but of late there is no interest or anything like that on the on the again on the vision etc i'm not going to uh, let's say repeat it because i hope you you heard that Uh, the key is like I, I agree with you, Aditya. Unless we the numbers translate to to the the the, the this translates to the number, uh, the basic believability will be there. But I think if you look at the SaaS businesses, uh, take more time, and we were also hit. We just had the new portfolio, and we will we were hit by COVID also, so we lost some time on the, these are new areas and uh, new areas and uh, new areas, new domain, which will take time for us to. Co- to try to tell the customer what this new value is all about so it is taking more time but uh, i am confident that it will show up in the numbers and then we'll start believing the story so you know the number that i'm talking about is 2015 i had a 60 crore interest outgo in my pnl 
you know i i don't correct, know if correct, uh, correct. You, you, you have that number or not right. uh, then correct. i diluted my equity i increased my uh, share capital you know uh, at whatever uh, at 13 14 bucks got in equity you know repaid my debt or converted my debt to equity and uh, basically today you know if, if if i would have done nothing and just simply just selling the same business i would have had a 60 crore ebitda <laughs> so that somehow that, that, you know no i agree i yeah, agree please, i agree please, with please. you you would have had a, you would have had an ebitda but no no portfolio to portfolio, portfolio to sell and grow the future so what we have I, done I today is that so, we have a, huh. we have a portfolio which we can make it but otherwise it would have been a declining business today today we can talk about it because we have a new set of portfolio which is an emerging growth market that should that is giving us the confidence that we will be able to grow the company if you have not done anything it would have been i mean it was sure good having i mean we could have managed this like that but i think we have managed the growth created the portfolio competing well in the market and the numbers will come out again fair, fair enough thank you so much in best of luck thank you thank you sir ladies and gentlemen that would be the last question i would now like to hand over the floor to the management for closing comments Uh, we thank you all for taking time for attending this call and uh, uh, thank you again for your continued interest in Subex. You can always reach us to reach out to us at uh, investor relations at investor relations at Subex dot com if you need any further uh, clarification. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, with this we conclude our conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using Dur Subha's conference call service. You may disconnect your lines now. Thank you and have a good day everyone.